Hi, my name is Harry Yoon, and I am a film editor. So I was interested in film actually while I was in undergrad at Williams College. Um, and I had kind of grown up uh, relate, actually more related to the theater. So I was in like musicals and plays uh, from a young age. I mean, nothing professional, but just in like my schools and things. Um, but uh, when I entered college, I was like, how do I take this interest in the arts uh, and do something with it? And I didn't think a career in theater at that time was practical for me, but I was like, oh, maybe film. And so I pursued an interest in film, it, even though it was I was at a school that didn't have an official film program. So I would do things like um, ask professors if I could turn in a final video instead of a final paper for classes and things like that. And uh, some of them agreed. Um, I even did a semester abroad at, New, at NYU uh, to take some production classes um, uh, during an exchange program um, on, a, not an exchange program, but a semester away program uh, in spring of my junior year. So things like that. But after I graduated though, I have to say like, as excited as I was, I was a little bit ambivalent about fully committing to a career in film. Um, I'm a child of first generation immigrants uh, and I'm an 1.5 generation myself. And the idea of like, just uh, having a career in the arts without any kind of financial security felt like a little selfish and maybe like too big of a risk, um, especially because I'd seen how sacrificially my parents had worked uh, all through my childhood. Um, so my 20s were kind of going back and forth. So I actually ended up going to um, NYU's uh, graduate directing program. I got in in my late 20s. I went for a year, but then I took a leave of absence, which turned permanent. and. I actually spent some time working in technology too, as a project manager and a product manager, et cetera. And right around the time that I turned 30, which is kind of late, you know, to finally commit to something, uh, it was right around when 9-11 happened. And that event was, a, was really kind of a wake up call for me. And, uh, and I realized, you know, life is short and anything can happen. And do I really want to give it a shot? And so uh, I made the decision after talking with my parents and talking with a therapist and all of those things, I was like, okay, I really want to give it a shot, but what am I going to do if when I move to LA? And I realized that with my background in technology and with um, that I really love the craft of editing. And I knew that maybe I, maybe I could probably get paying work as an editor faster than I could as a director or as a producer or a writer. And so I explicitly chose editing and said that, okay, if I'm gonna risk all of this, I'm gonna at least try to you know, be able to pay my rent within a couple of years. And so that's why I chose editing. And I'm so, so happy that I did because the more I did it, um, the more I uh, fell in love with the craft. And so basically, uh, at 31, I sold my condo, I like left my job, I left the Bay Area, moved to Los Angeles and started over as a PA and as an unpaid intern and worked my way up the ladder within a couple of years. So fortunate to get my first union job as an apprentice on a movie called Lords of Dogtown. And then um, was a second assistant on Charlotte's Web, a first assistant on Mr. McGowan's Wonder, Mr. McGowan's Wonder Emporium, still can't pronounce it now. Um, and then, you know, basically went into a career of assistant editing for money on bigger movies and then editing on the side or in, in, in between breaks on much smaller independent films, like the kind that, you know, hope to go to Sundance, things like that. And went back and forth for quite a while uh, until I, um, you know, did some notable credits like uh, editing on the newsroom, an HBO show. And then finally, my big break was co-editing a movie called Detroit for a director named Catherine Bigelow um, with uh, an amazing mentor uh, and um, uh, editor named Billy Goldenberg, who's like a five-time Oscar nominee. And so like that film really kind of um, cemented uh, my credibility as somebody that could handle larger projects and more responsibility and things like that. And then um, that path led me ultimately to Minati, um, which I got to edit a couple of years ago. And, you know, that was like the, it feels to me like um, the capstone of, you know, where I am right now, because my ambivalence in choosing film really came from you know, a desire to honor my parents' story and to make sure that their sacrifice wasn't in vain. And 
to be able to tell a story about immigrants of that time and of a family sort of, and to, and to hold them up and to do it with such dignity is something that feels like, um, you know, a, a real gift, you know, and to be, to be able to do it at this point in my career. So that's, that's kind of my journey thus far. Um, and uh, my hope and my goal in the future is to just keep mastering the craft of editing. Um, the analogy that I like to use is, I don't know if you guys have seen the documentary Jiro Dreams of Sushi. Like he's like spent his life like trying to master sushi making, you know, to make the perfect sushi. And uh, I kind of feel like that that's what I want to look forward to is to keep getting better at this craft and, um, you know, uh, pursuing the perfect sushi in terms of like editing. Well, I think um, as I mentioned in my uh, story that uh, my um, parents worked really, really hard um, while I was growing up. And I saw evidence of that. I saw that they would get up early to go. They owned a series of like stores and sandwich shops and grills and things like that. And they, uh, you know, spent a lot of hours um, at those places working hard so that um, my sister and I uh, would have the opportunities that they didn't have. And so I think seeing that work ethic, I think has really helped me um, through some of the most challenging times in my film career, because this is a profession that demands a lot of sacrifice and demands a lot of time uh, because it's a time-based medium. Like you're literally having to watch footage over and over again. And you're literally, or if you're shooting, you're, you're literally having to shoot things over and over again. And you have the pressure of time. And, and um, sometimes that means sacrificing um, social time. Sometimes it means, you know, putting strain on relationships that you might have, things like that. But I think um, having that strong conviction that, um, that the hard work will be worth it that the sacrifice will ultimately have fruit um, is something that I saw through, um, you know, the the way that my parents worked, and um, and also ultimately, you know, doing it for family, doing it for um, not only sort of the name of the family, but also um, for the sake of the family. And I think um, I feel, you know, more motivated to do it. Uh, and to and to do it well so that um, I can I guess represent um, my family in a in a positive light and uh, have them be proud of um, the work that I've been doing so I think early on um, as a Korean American especially one that chose this profession partly to tell stories of my community or tell diverse stories, there were times um, where I felt like, will that ever happen? Will, especially because I, you know, started my career like 20 years ago before, you know, some of the more recent developments in terms of seeing diverse stories uh, uh, were prevalent or were part of the trend. Um, so I think, yeah, that was part of my struggle is, is like, I have this heart to tell the story of our communities. I have this heart to work on those types of projects. Um, so, you know, when will that ever happen? So it was, it was kind of trying to maintain faith that it, was, it would be possible. Um, certainly participating uh, in Asian American film festivals and working alongside and encouraging and collaborating with Asian American filmmakers helped to keep that hope alive. Because I saw people practicing the craft and I saw evidence of good work uh, and was inspired by evidence of good work um, in those festivals. And I know that it was very sustaining and inspiring for me when I first arrived in LA to get involved with those kinds of organizations. So specifically here in LA, there's visual communications, which uh, for many, many decades has been, um, you know, cultivating and encouraging and providing community for Asian American filmmakers or people, Asian American media makers. And so it was wonderful to become embedded in that community and to kind of grow uh, alongside it as um, members of that community started to enter the, the you know, the upper echelons of um, film 
you know, to, to sort of see that happening and also to be able to participate in that way. So that was a very inspiring thing to see. And my hope is that, you know, anyone interested in media making from with an Asian American background will continue to support those kinds of organizations. Um, because, you know, I think you have to find your cohort, you have to find your community of like minded people, ideally with like a background that you share that bonds you. Uh, because uh, you can't make it in this industry alone. You have to sort of find people uh, that have similar passions and ideally something that bonds you together to, um, to rely upon and to collaborate with. Thank you. It's really inspiring. Are these, are these too long? Are they, are they, no, are no, they no. okay? Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah, perfect, yeah. It's really inspiring to like see people who look like me on the big screen too. I feel like I didn't think about it when I was younger. Like it was just what was being shown and it was just a given. But after seeing like since Crazy Rich Asians and like Parasite and now yeah. Minetti, it's really inspiring to like see our stories being told and like being accepted as that. It's really cool mm -hmm. to experience that. But, um, yeah, and you don't, you don't know you're missing it until you see it. Yeah. And when you see it, it's so powerful. Uh, and I felt the same way, like, reading my first, you know, reading my first Asian American novel or like or reading about Asian American history for the first time in college, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that I was missing this. I didn't know that I was missing this idea of being seen, of being part of a narrative in which I was always on the outside and I didn't realize it. You know, I think as an immigrant, you just expect like, oh, that's your lot in life. You're going to be the strange kid or you're going to be you know, somebody who looks different and maybe feels different, like that's, that's the role you play. And then when you, when you find yourself on the big screen or when you see yourself, you know, in a history book, you're like, no, actually I'm, I can be the protagonist. You know, I can be someone who's, who's part of the main narrative and not on the outside looking in. And that's incredibly empowering. So I know, I know how you feel. Well, I can answer, um, practically and kind of philosophically. <laughs> so I think practically um, there are, in terms of filmmaking, it's put a lot of projects on hold. Um, I was actually going to work on a, a, a new boxing movie called Flint Strong uh, with Rachel Morrison, who is the DP of Black Panther. Um, and it was a script written by Barry Jenkins. It's a wonderful project, really um, wonderful characters and, and uh, an inspiring, uh, based on a true story. But uh, that got put on hold after just two days of shooting. So very practically, it, it was a long time of not working, of not editing. Um, uh, and so and that, that was a financial strain and a little bit of a emotional strain too, not being able to work for a long time. Um, the way that we've now learned to work is really interesting where um, some projects, a lot of editors are working from home. And so they're, um, you know, uh, accessing footage, you know, th that's remote or they're sharing drives and things like that. So it feels even more isolating, ironically, than editing, which is already a, a bit of an isolating profession can be. Um, but thankfully, I think as um, protocols are being put into place and people are being tested and things like that, um, we're able, we're going to start to slowly transition. I can already sort of see that in my work and in the, in the projects that people are doing to, uh, back to hopefully more normalcy. Um, but philosophically, I think not being able to work and do my craft for a while, um, it uh, gave me an opportunity to just check my identity, uh, to be like, you know, am I so wrapped up in the work that I'm doing that my value, my sense of self is completely wrapped up in that? And it was nice to go through, you know, almost a wilderness period, right, where I needed to double check that to say, uh, can I have an identity outside of this work that I've been so immersed in and so um, committed to for so long? Uh, and where does that identity lie? And I think it was a wonderful time to uh, be reflective and meditative. Um, my faith tradition is I'm a Christian and, and to be, to get closer and deeper in terms of like my relationship and my identity built on that relationship uh, to God. I think um, having extra time to, to do that was a good reset for me uh, so that 
you know, even in the midst of something wonderful, like the way that Minari is being recognized, uh, I'm hopefully a little removed enough from that to not sort of invest my identity in, you know, the accolades that it might be receiving, but to say like, you know, that my identity actually is firmly rooted in my faith and in my identity that way. I said identity 15 times. So, but, but yeah, I think, uh, I think that was a nice, um, silver lining to a ch pretty challenging time. You know, I have to say it is probably Minari is the proudest uh, achievement um, because it's so personal, because it's a chance to honor the story of my parents and my community and to do it in a way and with the resources that uh, where we could do the best work possible. Uh, and we're so grateful to uh, Plan B and for A24 for supporting the film and for the remarkable artists that all kind of came together to make it. Um, I, first and foremost, Isaac is just such a wonderful, not just a wonderful director, but a wonderful man. And um, just becoming friends with him and collaborating with him, it's just, I think as an editor, you hope and pray to have strong relationships with certain directors and, and with the hopes that like, if you're successful together that you can keep working. They're, they're the kind of marriages that you kind of hope for. Like, and there are some people, there's some relationships like that. Like for example, um, Martin Scorsese has an editor named uh, Thelma Schoonmacher who is just a brilliant and wonderful editor and she cuts all of his films. And so I think as, editors working in feature films, you hope and pray for that type of relationship to develop. And I really feel like I've found that with Isaac. And, and so I'm so grateful for that. And then to have the first fruits of, of this relationship be such a personal, such a meaningful film. Um, I told my wife actually that, you know, if I don't get to edit anything else after this movie, I might be okay with that. Because I feel like this is what I've been kind of preparing and working and, 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 and developing my skills in order to do and to hopefully do well. And so uh, there was, I think, a deep sense of satisfaction um, once the film came out and started to find an audience. And, and even more than the accolades, like just hearing from uh, friends and family, some of whom I haven't talked to since like high school or, you know, and just saying like, hey, I watched with my parents or hey, I watched with my son or, you know, like, just hearing how the film is blessing people and just reminding them, especially during this time of like how important family is and how important those relationships are and how um, they feel seen. Um, that's been the greatest reward. So I think one of the wonderful benefits of having worked on a project that people are noticing is that uh, it gives you more options um, as you choose projects. And that's been a wonderful consequence of that. Um, I've, uh, in a rare position where I can talk to a lot of different people and to uh, delve into um, my choice of projects, uh, hopefully in the, in the next couple of films. Uh, first and foremost, I, I, I want to keep collaborating with Isaac. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to announce, you know, that we'll we're working on something new in the next, in the coming year. Um, uh, I'm working on a, uh, in the short term, I'm working on a, a much larger project. It's a Marvel film called uh, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. And so I'm very, very excited to be working on uh, the first Asian American superhero uh, film um, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And so that's been exciting. So hopefully this, ability to uh, not only do good work, but also to, to again, tell stories uh, of our community and from our community that um, can be inspiring or empowering. Um, hopefully that that's something that will continue. Um, but yeah, I mean, but bottom line, I think it's, it's having the opportunity to choose uh, good projects with good people that I just feel so blessed about. Um, the other thing that I think is gonna be very important for me is to continue uh, mentoring and giving back to um, up and coming, you know, younger editors, assistant editors. Um, I'm one of the mentors in a program um, 
uh, at ACE, which is uh, American Cinema Editors. It's an honorary society for editors that um, seeks to diversify our ranks uh, with people who've been underrepresented. So women, um, you know, ethnic with ethnic diversity uh, and with uh, LGBTQ um, uh, members and, and things like that. So just to make us sort of reflect more of what America looks like. And um, I was given to so generously by um, the people who mentored me. So it's a very for me to do that. Um, and finally, I think uh, there's a, a website that my friend founded that I'm the one of the film evangelists for called sidetime.com. And that also expands the opportunity for people who are interested in film to find writers, directors, editors, et cetera, and to ask them questions uh, over the phone. So um, hoping to uh, continue to invest in that in terms of my time and my advice.